step into the enchanting world of the 1956 film The King, and I, a timeless classic that weaves together culture, music, and the complexities of human relationships against the backdrop of Siam. This cinematic gem explores the intriguing dynamics between a British schoolteacher and the enigmatic King of Siam, offering a captivating narrative that delves into themes of tradition, love, and the collision of cultures. Asking if you have a cherished memory associated with this movie, or if it has impacted your life, is to open a door to countless personal stories and connections. Perhaps it sparked a fascination with different cultures, or maybe it's music stirred emotions that remain close to your heart. This film has a way of leaving an indelible mark on those who encounter its rich tapestry of storytelling. Did this film resonate with you in a special way? Do you have a cherished memory or a personal experience related to the king, and I that holds a special place in your heart? Share your stories and memories in the comments below, we would love to hear from you. Now, did you know that the movie was based on the 1951 Rodgers and Hammerstein Broadway musical, which itself drew inspiration from Margaret Landon's novel, Anna and the King of Siam? Also, it won five Academy Awards, including Best Actor for Yul Brynner's iconic portrayal of the king. Your turn, what's your cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? Share your stories and memories below in the comments section. Deborah Kerr's Best Actress Oscar-nominated performance in the 1956 movie The King, that I stands out as a unique achievement. Among the nominees that year, she was the only one recognized in a Best Picture nominee. Kerr's portrayal of Anna Leon Owens, an English schoolteacher who becomes the governess to the children of the King of Siam, garnered critical acclaim and an Academy Award nomination. The film, directed by Walter Lang, also features Yul Brynner as the King of Siam. Notably, Brynner had recently finished portraying Ramses II in The Ten Commandments before taking on the role of the king in this musical. The movie showcases the cultural clash between Anna and the king in an exotic setting, exploring themes of tradition, modernization, and relationships. Interestingly, the inclusion of the song of puzzlement faced initial opposition from producer Daryl F. Zanuck. However, both Brynner and writer Ernest Lehman were determined to incorporate it. Eventually, Zanuck relented, allowing reshoots that added the song and an opening sequence, ultimately increasing the film's budget by $400,000. The convergence of Kerr's standout performance, Brynner's portrayal, and the clash of cultures in The King and I remains a notable highlight of this 1956 classic. Yo Brynner's influential role extended beyond acting in the 1956 movie The King, and I despite Walter Lang's credited directorship, Brynner exerted substantial creative input, shaping the film through numerous directorial suggestions. His impact was pivotal in shaping the final product, influencing significant elements that resonated throughout the movie. Brynner's dedication to preserving the essence of the stage version clashed notably with studio executives' proposed alterations, particularly a contentious idea involving the king's fate. Fox executives proposed a drastic storyline change, triggering Brynner's staunch insistence on maintaining fidelity to the original narrative. His steadfast commitment ensured that the movie aligned closely with the acclaimed stage production, preserving its integrity and essence. The 1956 movie The King and I was a significant production that held various intriguing facets behind its creation. One noteworthy aspect was the extensive removal of musical numbers from the Broadway score during the filming process. Among these deletions were songs like My Lord and Master, Shall I Tell You What I Think of You? Expressing Anna's frustration, I have dreamed, a duet, and a spoken verse of Song of the King. These omissions, present in the Capitol Records soundtrack album, never made it to the final cut, altering the film's musical landscape. This alteration, though unseen in the movie, remains preserved in the released soundtrack, offering a glimpse into the movie's original vision. What further adds to the movie's historical context is its filming technology. Despite being filmed and promoted in the advanced 55mm cinema scope, the movie was exhibited in the standard 35mm format. The promised six-channel stereo sound was reduced to four-channel stereo, showcasing a disparity between initial promises and the final exhibition. This technological shift marked the early abandonment of CinemaScope 55, 
a format employed in only two feature films, including The King and I Moreover, the film's extravagant cost stands out as a significant financial divergence from its Broadway predecessor. The movie's budget, ten times higher than the lavish Broadway production, underscores the grand scale and investment put into bringing this iconic musical to the silver screen. These distinctive face deletion of musical numbers, technological transitions in filming, and the substantial financial investment underscore the intricate development and eventual presentation of the 1956 movie The King and I, offering insights into its production nuances. Deborah Kerr's iconic role as Anna in the 1956 film The King and I is marked by a lesser known detail her endurance of continual bruising from the hoops in her skirt during the filming of the Shall We Dance sequence. This behind the scenes struggle showcases the challenges faced by actors, highlighting the dedication required to deliver a memorable performance. Care's commitment to her role persisted despite the physical discomfort, underscoring her professionalism and the demands of bringing a character to life on screen. Yul Brynner's advocacy for Deborah Kerr to portray Anna in the film was rooted in her stage prowess and star power. Kerr's candidacy aligned with a select few list actresses capable of carrying a movie during that era. Brynner's preference stemmed from both admiration for Kerr's stage performances and the limitations posed by the untimely passing of Gertrude Lawrence, his former co-star. Lawrence's battle with cancer interrupted the Broadway show's run and concluded with her passing shortly after its end. Brynner's influence and Kerr's suitability as a leading actress played pivotal roles in shaping the casting decisions for the iconic roles in the film. The short scene in which Anna is taken through the streets of Bangkok to the King's Palace in the 1956 movie The King, and I was a massive undertaking. It required 25 sets sprawled across a three-acre area on the Fox back lot, excluding the stables for the elephants used in the sequence. This meticulous construction underlines the grand scale and attention to detail invested in bringing this particular segment to life on screen. Marnie Nixon, hired on a six-week contract, played a unique role behind the scenes. While Deborah Kerr rehearsed scenes with songs, Nixon stood next to her, both singing and closely observing Kerr's facial expressions. Nixon aimed to imitate Kerr's speech pattern in the songs, emphasizing the dedication and precision demanded to ensure musical consistency throughout the film. This expansive setup and Nixon's meticulous mimicry offer a glimpse into the intricate behind-the-scenes efforts that contributed to the authenticity and visual spectacle of the king and I. As the curtains draw to a close, let's linger in the timeless allure of the king. And I, this cinematic masterpiece of 1956 captivates not merely with its opulent visuals, but with its tender exploration of culture, identity, and the dance between tradition and change. Have you found resonance in the poignant melodies, or perhaps the intricate dance sequences that mirror the intricate dynamics between its protagonists? Take a moment to unearth your personal treasure trove of memories and emotions woven around this cinematic gem. Whether it's the grace of Deborah Kerr's portrayal or the majesty of Yul Brynner's presence, that has left an indelible mark. These recollections beckon us to cherish and celebrate the enduring legacy of this cinematic marvel. In the tapestry of shared experiences, your narrative, too, finds its place. Your thoughts, your memories, they are the threads that enrich the fabric of appreciation for this classic. Consider sharing your reflections to your favorite scene, a resonating quote, or the emotions that this film stirred within you. Engage with others, spark conversations, and together, let's paint a vivid tableau of admiration for the king. And I, your unique perspective adds a new layer to the mosaic of appreciation, infusing it with depth and diversity. Thank you for honoring this timeless classic with your personal connection. It's the collective sentiment that keeps the magic of such cinematic brilliance alive. Thank you for your time and interest. Your presence in this journey of cinematic appreciation is valued and cherished.